In the 1930s, there were at least 1,500 Jewish delis making great pastrami sandwiches in New York City. But now, there are less than 20. The most famous one, my favorite one, is Katz's Deli. And while that's amazing, I do wonder what makes this New York institution so special that they're able to survive 134 years. It turns out they own their building. That means they can focus on what they do best. That's making the best pastrami sandwich I've ever tasted and not having to worry about making the rent on time. Now, just take a moment and imagine all those pastrami sandwiches you and I will never taste just because of this problem. Small businesses everywhere should have a chance the way Katz's did to become owners of their own building. Today, we're talking with a founder who has a solution to that. Let's get started. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. I just wanted to start off with, you know, you have a big personal mission as a part of working on this startup. You know, how did you start thinking about this as a problem to solve? Yeah, well, it actually starts here in Brooklyn. My uh, parents had a grocery store in Clinton Hill. And yeah, if you had met them, good people, hardworking. Uh, they had run that for about 20 years. And after that uh, time, um, they got a phone call from their new landlord of the building, big development company, 21-year-old um, kid looking at a spreadsheet. And he told my dad, you know, amazing job creating this great store here. Uh, we're really sorry, but we're going to double your rent next month. And uh, if you can't pay it, we've got a different idea for what the neighborhood should look like. Uh, about a week later, I actually parked a wrecking ball crane in front of the store. Uh, we lost the business in a month, and we actually lost our home a few months after. Um, and I was 11, and so asking hard why questions to my parents. But the one that stuck with me the most and still sits with me to this day is why you know, being really good at what you were doing, being, you know, on the PTA and a little league coach, why all of that actually ended up leading to sort of our own family's demise in the neighborhood. And that question in aggregate of, you know, why are there really good, you know, hardworking families and entrepreneurs across the country who effectively displace themselves by being really successful, that became the real genesis for WITCO. Yeah, these are people who are, you know, really building up the community. There's real value to having them there. And yet, how do you think about actually solving it for them now? Like, how does WITCO actually work? I think the real estate experience is really interesting. We all sort of feel it. Gentrification is the sort of dirty word. Um, and whether you're like the stockbroker who lived in Brooklyn or you were, you know, one of my parents' cashiers, uh, it affected you equally for that store to go away. And so that's sort of where we started exploring the problem, but pretty quickly realized that real estate actually had nothing to do with it. The biggest problem and more fundamental problem is that it's actually become really, really hard to be a small business owner in America. It's become very risky. The perception of risk has also gone up pretty dramatically. Um, and so who's sort of willing to take a shot to work with you? Um, big businesses have become very big. And so if you have to choose between, you know, working with like Gary's coffee shop or a Starbucks, like you have a pretty clear choice today. And so, you know, we believe that sort of systemic misalignment is what creates gentrification to happen in the first place. But it all comes back to real estate because it's a crazy phenomenon that, you know, this platform risk exists for small business owners, that to be successful, you actually end up kind of screwing yourself. Um, and when we looked at sort of the two financial products in the market, one being a mortgage, which ownership would have been a great solution for my parents had they been able to afford it or had the time or know how to, known how to buy a piece of commercial real estate. And on the other side, a lease, which is the product that pretty much every small business owner needs to take. It's a short term relationship with the space. Um, it's counterproductive for you. So if you do well, you end up displacing yourself. And it's one of those, um, you know, real sort of tragedies because uh, it's not only that the business owner loses, it's that an entire community loses once, they're, once they go away. So it's really sort of a form of almost societal waste or loss because here's an empty space. Sometimes it's on a corner. It ends up being you know, literally the cornerstone of a community. People move to that neighborhood because you know, that corner store is there. That's right. And then suddenly you know, housing values go up. 
rent goes up all around that area and then suddenly that same business that was the cornerstone could not stay there. That's where Withco can come in. As you know, sort of the neighborhood rises, that business owner can turn to Withco and say, well, I'd like to buy this place, could you help me? Yeah, that's exactly right. Small business ownership, community ownership comes hand in hand with small business ownership. And I think we all love our small businesses. And so the product that we've really built to start um, was really thinking about sort of what incentives would actually make sense for a small business owner today. Uh, a mortgage really does not have product market fit. A lease does not have product market fit either. They lead to sort of terrible sort of even behavioral relationships between landlords and tenants today. And so this idea of, you know, what is that incentive structure led to us thinking about sort of lease to own. And so we would work with business owners um, all over the country and every single day to um, basically get on the path to ownership. And in doing so, you get to lease your space like you would from any other landlord, whether it's one that you're in or one that you want to grow into or uh, one that you want to move to. And every year that you pay rent, we actually give you a down payment credit that you can use over the course of that lease to basically buy us out from the property. We tell you what the price is going to be from day one that we purchased the building for. We also tell you exactly what you'll pay um, after, after the term. And with that, it just creates a completely different, um, actually, behavioral relationship. It's sort of very simple, but you know, if you have the same goal as someone, which is we want to sell you this property, we think you deserve to be here in the long run, we treat each other very differently. And so instead of this relationship built on um, opacity and keeping your information close and your intentions close, and for a landlord, that's actually problematic because they don't know you know, the quality of the business owners they're working with, um, you know, we get to see that information and using that information, we get to actually focus on scaling our impact by helping more and more business owners. So if I'm a small business and I go to Withco and sign up, you know, what kind of experience should I expect? It sounds like at least some of it is, you know, using data, using, a, you know, really a lot more information. Withco can make smarter decisions about locations, where, you know, if you have to relocate, where you should go, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I think it starts, um, you know, kind of with like onboarding, right? So you knock on the door and I'll use like a doctor's office as an example, but there's like a sign in sheet with what your, look, what your problem is and what you're looking for. And we want that experience to be awesome. It's like not only about tech and making it really easy for us to collect your information. It's also about, we think, empathetically sort of walking you into the door. And that's about actually speaking to someone about your situation. After we do that and we have the information of, you know, this is where you are currently and this is how, you know, how many years you've been in business and this is your financial health and uh, how much you can actually afford, we'll start thinking of sort of options for you. And so you're sort of in this waiting room of, um, you know, when am I going to be seen? What are my options? Um, you know, are the snacks nurturing for me? And so we're trying to actually, you know, over time, even like help you get on that path to ownership, uh, whether it's because your lease expires or because um, you've hit some profitability threshold where you can actually move to a second location or grow to a second location. And so that's sort of the experience that we want to deliver to small business owners because it's sort of all about listening. It's about how, how can we actually understand, you know, that sort of messy spreadsheet over there or, you know, this information over here and actually give you this information back to say, this is actually when you're going to be ready for property ownership. It may be today, it may be five years from now, it may be 20 years from now, but at least you have that as an option versus sort of taking what the market gives you, which is mostly leasing. I think that fits with the broader picture of financial technology and mm. fintech broadly, that time was there was a bank and the mm. bank had these specific criteria and anyone who didn't fit this like very tightly constrained set, which was pretty much everyone, just didn't have access to credit, didn't have mm. access to really the lifeblood of what allows great businesses to sort of thrive. Mm. And so it, it's really cool to hear you know, this is a very important part of, you know, civic life, which mm. is like the small business owner mm. and giving them another option. It's, it's just so meaningful. Like, I feel like the great promise of tech, um, not in the black mirror way, but in the way that, you know, I think maybe sci-fi sort of like paints is, 
you know, it's really like empathetic. Like it's like you don't actually fit into the box. Like there's actually this huge sort of color scale of where you can be. Um, and if we can sort of say like it's actually not a box, but this is where you are and this is where you need to be, you know, you just open up basically access to way more people. So if someone watching wants to get involved, whether, you know, working on this great mission with you and your team, or they own a small business or have a friend or family member who, you know, might get help, might, might need help from WithCo, like how would they get involved? Yeah, with.co, super easy. You can either onboard there, whether you're trying to join the team or, you know, join the mission or, um, you know, want to work with us on sort of thinking about your future as a, as a business owner and property owner. Yeah, it's a one-stop shop. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us on the channel today. I mean, it's just really cool to see something that can open up new doors for small business while also being a truly great fintech startup as well. Thanks for having me. That's it for this week. What we try to do on this channel every week is to help you on your journey as a founder, future founder, builder, or manager. So if this is your first time watching, please click like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss a video. We've now made over 100 videos like this, so if you wanna see the best of those, click over to the Initialized Capital channel and hit subscribe there. Link in the description. And as always, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you next week. Thank you.